Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha Yoga practice today here at the Everyday Counts program. Um, usually we have no props in this practice, but now and then I like to throw in a few uh, just for some variety. So today I'd like to use two hard foamy yoga blocks. So hopefully that's not too much of a barrier to participate. Um, you could use a few books sort of taped together or elasticized together. Um, you could use anything at all, but you might have a friend or a neighbor that has a block you could use. So let's begin by finding a comfortable way of being. And that might be lying down, it might be sitting upright. Since you've got these blocks, if you'd like to explore kneeling on a couple of blocks, sometimes that opens up the knee angle and allows kneeling to feel a lot more comfortable. Um, but again, you could lie down, you could sit in a chair, whatever you need to be comfortable. And once you are comfortable, perhaps close your eyes, Perhaps begin to breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive here in the present. You might notice where your body touches the floor. gentle feeling of pressure, this gift of gravity, trusting that you won't float away, that you are fully supported and held here to the earth. There's a feeling of stillness and connection wherever your body touches down, this gift of gravity. So let's tune in to stillness, to connection. And at the same time, let's now begin to notice the movement of our own breath. We can soften the belly to receive the in-breath deep. Maybe soften the shoulders as the exhale rolls out slow. And this doesn't have to be the fullest inhale or the most complete exhale. We're simply allowing or inviting the belly to soften and expand with the inhale and to naturally draw back in with the exhale. This is an invitation, a gentle allowing. Allowing the inhale to deepen. The exhale to lengthen. It's simple, but it's so powerful to nourish the nervous system. To support the whole body the mind. So let's offer a few more breaths here, soft and deep, and soft and slow. So here we are now. If it suits you, perhaps press a hand to the belly, a hand to the chest, and perhaps not. Offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you.
slowly releasing your hands. Yeah. So we're gonna get moving a little bit now. I thought we could begin by coming to kneeling. Um, so that's hips off of heels, just like so. And we're gonna pick up one of those blocks. And if you don't have a block, you can pretend you've got one. You could even use a ball or a pillow. Again, just anything that kind of allows you something you can press into, or you can imagine it, yeah. So, got the block in front of me. I'm gently pressing into it. And now I'm going to notice if I can lift the shoulders high and then lower the shoulders. So I'm not kind of lifting the arms up and down. I'm actually using the lift of the shoulders to lift the arms, to lower them. We'll do this a few times. Nice shrug to the ears and then shrug away from the ears gentle press of the block with the hands. Two more. And you could sit any way you wanted for this. Kneeling is just a suggestion. You could be on the edge of a chair, you could have your legs out in front of you or sitting cross-legged and kneeling. Just any way to access the upper body. So there might be a little heat in the shoulders, some sensation. So let's put the block down Maybe we press it gently against the belly and we can breathe into that block. Inhale, feel that gentle pressure. And exhale, gentle inward movement. And a couple more. And soft shoulders. Okay, so we're going to lift that block up again. We're going to press into it. Again, the arms aren't going to do the moving here, but the shoulders are. So I'm going to shrug my shoulder blades together, and that's going to bring the block closer. I'm going to kind of spread those shoulder blades apart, and the block is further away from me. It's tempting to simply bend the elbows here to bring the block closer and further away. But we're really looking for a little movement in the shoulders. Shrug them together. Shrug them apart. And I'm exaggerating so you can see it really easily, but this movement could be smaller and that's okay. Yeah. A few more. I'm probably feeling lots of warmth and awareness here in these wonderful shoulders. Okay, again, we're going to put that block down against the belly, just gently. You might hold on to it like so. We're going to invite the breath to connect to that block. Okay, we've got a few more here. Uh, so the next one, we're going to bring the block up like so. You notice my elbows are right under my shoulder, or my elbows are right under my wrists. Uh, I've got a 90 degree angle here. Again, I'm going to gently press into the block. You get to choose how much you're going to press in. I'm going to bring the elbows down by the waist or by the side body, and then back up again, see if we can maintain a gentle pressure. Now we're going to let the shoulders drop away from the ears. We're going to start to notice sort of what engages here. It's tricky to keep those elbows under the wrists. I know mine start to swing out to the sides. We're going to see if we can do this a few more times. I'm just bringing those elbows to shoulder height for now. Now let's do one more. Keep pressing into that block. Ah, you can again gently rest the block against the belly. Let the shoulders be soft. Maybe even closing your eyes if you want. Starting to feel all of that awareness in the shoulders and shoulder blades. So the next one involves arms overhead, and if it doesn't speak to you, that's okay. You can return to some of the other movements, um, you know, or just take a rest for this one. 
So we are going to reach the block overhead. And again, if the elbows need to separate a little bit, that's fine. I'm going to kneel just so you can see my arms here. Um, but we are going to see if we can bring the elbows in a little bit. It's tempting to have them out here, and that might be what's available today. But we're moving towards bringing them in, and we're pressing into that block. Yeah. And it's okay, again, if the arms are further forward. This is what we're moving towards. So keeping those upper arms nice and vertical, we're going to bend the elbows, tuck that block behind the head. And this one's more challenging for sure. We're just seeing what's possible. It's really tempting to start to let the front ribs kind of pop forward. So let's think about drawing those front ribs in and that's gonna kind of secure the core here. And then again, bending and straightening. You might feel a lot of stretch through the backs of those upper arms. Our arms might be coming forward a bit, that's okay. Finding a way that works for you. Let's do three or four more. Still breathing through your nose if you can. I've lost count, but let's do a couple more. Drawing those front ribs in, feeling the belly strong. Great. Ooh, and now we'll put our arms down. Got two more variations here. One of them is just to give those shoulders a bit of a rest. Um, so we're taking the block behind the back. Yeah. And if possible, we're going to press our hands into the edges of those blocks. You'll notice here my elbows might bend to get uh, my hands onto those uh, blocks, but eventually I'm moving towards straightening the elbows. And also, the block might be kind of tucked against the back here, but we're moving towards bringing the block away from the back. We're going to soften those shoulders. Press into the block, and there it is. So this could be the practice right here. There's going to be a great stretch here, some activation to press into the block. But if you want to try it, you could go hand to hand. And this is adding some nice fluid movement here. Behind the back, hand to hand. You can float those arms as much as you want. Keep the heart slightly lifted. I don't know if you can hear me when I turn around. But again, heart slightly lifted, letting this movement be fluid. We're working towards straightening the arms and reaching them as far behind us as we can. Yeah. Still breathing through the nose if you can. Keeping a little lift to the heart. You know, and you can adjust your seat so you're still comfortable. Let's do a couple more passes. Wonderful. Final piece here. Let's press into those block, that block, and just press it away from the back for a moment. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, again, we're going to bring the block to the belly for a moment. We're going to feel that inhale gently press against the block. Exhale, the block draws in toward the belly. A couple more soft shoulders. All right, we have one more. I'm going to kneel down for it only so you can see my hands. Uh, so, Final piece here with our block shoulders. I'm pressing into the edges of the block and you can move with me here. I'm bringing the block to the right side of the face. Okay. Now I'm gonna slowly tuck the block behind the head and then to the other side and forward. Okay. We'll change direction. Block to the side, tuck it behind, other side and forward. So, you know, that's a challenging movement, but we've done a lot to warm up and mobilize the shoulders. It's really tempting to try to sort of move your head instead of the block. But let's see if we can keep the head nice and quiet and find this kind of glide of the shoulders with the block. We'll just do a few more of these. Again, you kind of find the side, the back, 
to the side and forward and we change direction. Side, back, I've sort of tipped those elbows up, forward. Maybe once more in either direction. It's okay if this is a little bit challenging to coordinate. We're just playing with what's possible. Great. Again, we'll just rest the block here for a couple more breaths. Shake out those shoulders if you need to. Wonderful. So let's get the weight off the knees for a few moments. Uh, we are going to come to seated and we'll bring the legs out in front of us. We'll lean into the hands. Yeah, let's pay attention to the lower body now after so much focus on the upper body. So you could gaze at those wonderful toes. You could curl the toes and spread the toes a few times. I like you're making little fists with your toes. Yeah. Starting to bring all that awareness down into the feet. Start to point and flex. circle, letting everything settle, change direction, wonderful, and then we can shake that out, we can shake out the hands. So we're going to do a little bit of scooching again just to mobilize the lower body. Um, you might be able to wiggle yourself back towards the end of your mat. Keep your hands at your sides if you need to here. You can even have a little bend in the knees, especially if the low back feels tight or the hamstrings feel short. Yeah, so we can start to rock from side to side. And these kind of bony bits that you're rolling over here, those are your sitting bones or your ischial tuberosities. Yeah, so this could feel like a kind of awkward massage to begin with. But now we're going to see if we can start to Kind of rock from sitting bone to sitting bone and move forward a bit. Again, you can use your hands as much as you need to, even if you need to lean into the hands or kind of bring your legs along. Let's just notice if we can get a little bit of forward motion. Okay, and now as we come towards the front of our mat, let's try to back it up. And this can create a lot of uh, opportunities for movement in the hips and in the pelvis. So even if it's a little tricky to figure this one out, um, you know, there's some benefit. So we're going to try that again. Just see how it goes. Maybe you lift the arms this time. Maybe you add a little opposite arm leg movement if you want to look as silly as me. Uh, see if we can find some forward movement. Okay, and then we can back it up again. If you want to add the arms, it's trickier. So let's see, right hip back, right elbow back. Yeah, <laughs> supernatural. Here we go. Wonderful. So maybe we made it to the back of the mat again. I'm going to lean into the hands, take the feet wide, knees bent. If you practice with me regularly, you know where we're going with this. We'll rock the knees to one side and then to the other. And just notice how that feels. It's okay if you start to move forward a bit. Go as slow as you need to. Feet nice and wide. Yeah, okay. So we are going to add a little twist again, as we often do, just to kind of check in with the whole body. So let's meet with the knees at center. As they fall to the right, leaning into that right hand, I'm going to sweep the left arm around and reach. And then slowly come back and reaching those fingertips away from me. As the knees come to center, the hand comes back down. Knees fall left. We're sweeping the right arm around. Reach. And then slowly back. Let's do this a couple more times in either direction. Maybe even closing your eyes. Imagine that lovely spiral from the base of your spine to the crown of your head. 
slowly back. Other side. Feel the breath moving through the pose. Once more, either direction. Moving with as much ease as we can muster here. Slowing it down, finding our way. And we'll meet back at center. Okay, let's make our way to hands and knees tabletop position. Just notice how it feels to be here. You might rock the hips a little bit from side to side. You might adjust those hands maybe if the hands aren't comfortable flat, we can come onto the tops of fists. If that doesn't feel Quite right, we might come on the forearms. Yeah. We're gonna take that into more of a circular movement, rock to one side, roll back through child, rock to the other side and the hips circle forward. And I do this in almost every class that I teach because I feel like those outer hips need it. But this also brings some movement to the wrists, the shoulders and the knees. Let's circle once more in this direction. And then perhaps change the direction of the circle. And then you know, the weight shifts forward onto the hands or the forearms. So you can kind of push down through those hands or forearms, kind of pushing the floor away. And a couple more. And then we'll meet back in our neutral tabletop position to shake out the hands. All right, one more bit here before we add some less familiar movement. Um, so we'll move through cat cow. So we've got our neutral spine. Again, we could be on forearms or fists. We're gonna tuck that tailbone under and begin to slowly round the spine. And then turn the tailbone up and slowly arc. You might close your eyes as you lead with the tailbone, allowing each vertebra to follow. And as you round the spine, you might feel the belly squeeze a little bit. You might press those shoulder blades apart just like when we pressed the block forward. You might turn the tailbone up and begin to arch the spine and we might shrug those shoulder blades together, just like when we drew that block closer at the start of our practice. So let's flow through this a couple more times in either direction, finding the engagement, finding the stretch, that lovely movement through the shoulder blades and through the pelvis. But even more so, just the beautiful articulation of the spine. What a gift. Now, so we will meet back at center and let's widen our knees if that's comfortable and press the hips back towards the heels, walking those arms forward, resting the forehead on the mat or crossing the forearms and resting, or even stacking the fists. It's okay if the hips are quite high off the heels. It's different for everyone. We're just moving towards pressing those hips back towards the heels, lengthening the low back. Let's offer three or four breaths here. Soft, deep in breath. And softer, slower out breath. Feel the belly expanding as you inhale. And the whole body can soften as you exhale. Couple more.
All right, so we will return to our tabletop position and we are going to use our blocks again. So we're gonna use both this time and I'm bringing them right under my hands in tabletop position. Yeah, just noticing how that feels. And you could again do this on fists and I think this would even work on forearms, but it won't be as ideal, but just play with it, see what's possible. So from tabletop position, I'm gonna bring the right leg out to the side. Now this is again gonna be different for everyone. There might wanna be a little bend in that knee. We might stay on the inside edge of the foot or we might move towards straightening the leg. Another challenge here is the leg might need to be back a little bit, probably not forward a bit. Um, so just kind of playing again with what's possible. It's hard to tell here, but my left knee is staying under my left hip. Yeah. So here we go. We're gonna shrug the shoulders away from the ears and press down into those blocks. And then we're gonna shift the weight forward and back a little bit. I like to imagine my sitting bones, those bony bits that we rolled over when we were seated, as sort of reaching to the back of the room. And then the crown of my head reaching forward. So as I press back, sitting bones back, coming forward there. Now notice my foot. As I shift back, I'm gonna come onto the heel, turning the toes up. As I shift forward, I might come onto the toes, lifting the heel. So we'll go forward and back a few more times. And you can choose how big a movement you want this to be. This could be just a little bit in the middle. I could be exploring these deeper end ranges. It really depends on you today. Yeah. And shrug away from the ears. We'll reach forward through the crown of the head and reaching back through those sitting bones. few more. Great. So we're going to come back to that first position. Hopefully that leg is okay to be there a little bit longer. So locate your right hand. We're going to hover it off the mat, and this could be the pose. What we're going to aim to do now is reach it out to the side and then up overhead. So I'm pressing down through the left hand, reaching up through the right hand. And if you can see my foot there at the bottom of the screen, I've come onto my heel and turned my toes up. Yeah. So pressing down to reach up. Now as I bring the hand back down to the block, I'm going to bring the sole back down to the mat or the inner edge of the foot. Now let's come on to those left fingertips. We're really pressing down through the right hand now. We'll sweep the left arm out to the side, press down as we reach up. You're not gonna twist as far this way, You're just listening to the body, kind of finding that rotation through the rib cage. Press down to reach up, and then slowly back down. Let's try that once more in either direction. So, I'm gonna bring the right arm out to the side, press down to reach it up, maybe come onto the heel, turn the toes up. We'll breathe into that stretch. And now we'll sweep that hand down, root the sole. And now coming onto the left fingertips, reach the left arm out to the left, press down through the right hand, as we reach up through the left, and two breaths here, just rooting that sole. And slowly back down. Yeah. Now let's guide the right knee in. And now we're going to pick up the blocks and move them about a block length forward. And then as we press back into child pose, you're going to notice that the arms are elevated and on those blocks. So if the elbows are actually dipping down to the floor, see if you can bring the blocks further forward or drop the hips further back. The forehead might hover a little bit here, and that's okay. Um, we're looking for that stretch in the shoulders and in the armpits. And you could add a little bit of uh, tension here by pressing the hands down into the blocks, like you're trying to press the blocks into the mat. You're gonna feel some engagement. 
And then maybe the next exhale, let go of that press and just melt into the stretch. Again, we're gonna press the hands down into those blocks, maybe feel the armpits and chest engage. You might even feel like you're lifting up a little bit through the chest. Exhale, soften, melt. Let's do that one more time. Press your hands down into the floor, into the blocks. Get a little shaky with it. Exhale, let go. And let's rest here for another couple breaths. Okay, so we're gonna to return to tabletop and set this up on the other side. So again, I've got my hands on my blocks. I could be on fists if I need to. I'm bringing the left leg out to the side this time. And you might have different needs on this side. So if that knee needs to be a bit bent, a little further back, that's okay. We're gonna meet ourselves wherever we need to be today. We've got our sitting bones reaching to the back of the room. I'm going to reach the crown of the head to the front. And as I press back, I'm going to come onto the heel, turn the toes up. As I come forward, I'm kind of pulling my hands back, shrugging shoulders away, coming onto those toes. Yeah. And this might be a really unfamiliar movement, so taking it slow here. You'll notice that that movement is actually happening through the hips here as we rock onto the heel, turning the toes up. As we rock onto the toes, lifting the heel up, there's that movement through the hip. So that can be quite a stretchy feeling. And I'm reaching forward through the crown of the head as I come forward, just to keep the back of the neck long and strong to keep from letting the head hang or even from kind of cranking and looking forward, trying to find that kind of neutral neck that goes with that neutral spine. You might notice how your breath is showing up for you here in this movement. And breathing through the nose if you can. Let's do this a couple more times in either direction. Noticing what you feel. Maybe it's a little different on this side. So we will meet back at center, just like before. We're gonna shift the weight onto the right hand. We're gonna hover those left fingertips and then bring the left arm out to the side. We're pressing down through the right to lift through the left. Notice my foot, I'm coming onto the heel, turning the toes up. Couple breaths to feel this stretch. At the same time, we're pressing down to reach up. Okay, let's bring it down. I'm rooting the sole and bringing that left hand down. I'm getting the weight onto the left hand. I'm going to come onto those right fingertips and then reach the right arm out to the right. Pressing down through the left as I reach up through the right. I can't rotate as far this way and that's okay. I'm going to root the sole and reach. One more breath. And slowly down. Let's do that once more in either direction. Pressing into that right hand, I'm sweeping the left arm off the block. Reaching up as I press down, coming onto the heel, turning the toes up. And feeling that stretch. At the same time, pressing down, feel your strength. We're gonna slowly come down, root the sole. Hovering that right hand, we can sweep it out to the side. Press down through the left as you reach through the right. Feel into that. And back down. And let's bring the leg in. So again, we're gonna do that block press in child pose, but we're gonna take the blocks a block length forward and a block length out to the side. Got our hands on those blocks, we're gonna press back, maybe even widening the knees in that child pose. 
Yeah, arms are a little elevated. Forehead might be hovering and it might not be. Let's see if we can press our hands down into the blocks, down into the floor. Notice what engages. And then let it go. Again, press your hands down into the floor, into the block. Get a little shaky. And let it go. And one more time, press. And release. Now let's rest here for a couple more breaths. Wonderful. Okay, walk your hands off those blocks and back under your shoulders and we'll come back upright. So the rest of our practice will be lying on our back, playing with those blocks in a, a few different ways and then we'll move into final relaxation. So take your time coming down onto your back and just have those blocks within arm's reach. This is a nice low and slow practice today where we don't even bother to stand up. We can do plenty of stuff close to the mat. So we'll come back to that familiar movement where we take the feet wide, knees bent, and we might even reach the arms overhead if that's comfortable, just any kind of place where they land. And now both knees fall to the right, back to center and to the left. We'll do that a few more times. And I'd like to add a little bit of a stretch here. So let's meet with the knees at center. As they fall to the right, you can let them stay there. To stretch through the left side so I feel like I'm kind of squeezing the left butt letting it roll off the mat I feel like I'm stretching my left knee away from my left fingertips trying to stretch that whole left side of the body maybe even pushing into that left foot or pushing that left foot into the mat kind of feel the stretch and then let it go the knees are going to naturally want to come to center and then let them fall to the left and now we're stretching through the right side. So I'm gonna squeeze my right butt, let it roll off the mat. Feel like I'm reaching my fingertips away from my right kneecap, maybe even pressing my right foot down into the mat a little bit. You're gonna feel a little stretch here or a big stretch. That's what I'm feeling. And then slowly release it. Let's do that once more either side. This is a great release from sitting a lot. You're gonna feel that stretch through the front of the thigh. So the knees fall to the right. I'm going to squeeze that left butt, let it tip forward. I'm going to stretch left fingertips away from the left kneecap, maybe press the left foot into the mat for a moment. Feel it. Ah, and let it go. Once more, other side. So the knees are going to fall to the left. I'm going to squeeze the right butt, let it peel off the mat a little bit, kind of pressing the right hip forward into that thigh stretch. We're stretching right fingertips away from the right knee, pressing the right foot into the mat a little bit. Let's feel it. And let it go. Wonderful. Okay. So we're gonna bring those knees back to center and walk those feet in towards each other until they're about hip distance apart, yeah. And then we'll walk the heels towards the buttocks a little bit. So it feels like your shins are vertical. So knees are right above the ankles. This is where we're going to pick up one of our trusty blocks. And it, uh, this is optional um, always. You can definitely do this movement without the block. We're placing it between the thighs. So it's the short end facing and vertical. It's above the groin, below the knee. I like to think there's a nice fleshy bit at the inner thighs that can easily squeeze this block. 
Um, hands could be down by your sides if you want to use the arms a bit here. Or you could turn the palms up. So see what's more comfortable for you. I'm going to lift and spread the toes and then lower the toes down again and find your feet. Press them gently down into the mat. At the same time, let's squeeze the block a little bit and press the low back down into the mat. This in itself will hopefully give you a sense of kind of core engagement, pressing the low back into the mat, gently squeezing the block, pressing the feet down. Let's just feel that for a moment. And then let it go. And that could be the practice right there. Squeeze the block, press through the feet, imprint the low back. So I'm gonna give you another option here. So again, press the feet, squeeze the block, imprint the low back. And now let's start to lift the hips and peel the back off the mat. Keep squeezing that block, pressing into the feet. And then slowly lower down again, one vertebrae at a time, so that when you get to the bottom here, you can press the low back into the mat again. And then we'll let it go. So we're gonna play with that a few more times. Press down through the feet, squeeze the block, imprint the low back, strong belly, lift the hips. You're gonna feel your butt engage, getting strong here as you press through the hands, press through the feet or the arms. And then slowly back down. At any point, you can take a break, remove the block, press the knees to the belly. We're gonna try three more. Press, squeeze, imprint, and then lift. And you're lifting right up until you're resting on your shoulder blades, maybe even feeling a stretch through those thighs. Back down again. Two more. Always optional. Squeeze, press, imprint, and peel your back off the mat. Slowly back down. One more, if you so choose. Imprint, squeeze, press, roll up. Roll back down. Ah, let's remove that block. Let's walk the feet wide and rock the knees again. If it helps, maybe next time the knees are at center, we could lift the feet, hug the knees to the belly, rock a bit from side to side. It's different for everybody, so whatever movement feels right for you. I'd like to do one more variation of bridge without the blocks, just to see how it feels different. So we're gonna take those feet uh, back to the mat. We're gonna take the feet nice and wide, just like those windshield wiper movements. The feet are at the edges of the mat and the feet might be turned out slightly. And we're gonna walk the heels in a little bit. So again, the shins feel vertical, like the ankles are right below the knees. And arms could be out to the sides or down by your sides. We're gonna press the feet down into the mat, press the low back down into the mat, and then start to peel the back off the mat. And just lifting as high as feels comfortable for you, but no higher than the shoulder blades. And slowly back down. Think about being ready to press the low back down into the mat. So the core kind of comes with you the whole time. Again, let's press down through the feet and lift. And lower. Again, pressing the low back down and release. Do that two more times, a little slower than you might want to, pressing down, lifting up, push through the feet. Let's get the backs of the legs really strong here, lowering with control, already kind of reaching that low back towards the floor, letting the core support us. One more, if you so choose, push and lift. Lower nice and slow and be ready to 
touch the floor with that low back. And releasing. You can walk those feet a little further away. You might rock the knees again. You might naturally wish to lift those feet, hug the knees in. You might circle both knees together, just checking in. So we just have time for one more little bit of movement. Um, so let's bring the soles of the feet back to the mat, feet wide, and rest the knees against each other. You might even turn the toes in a bit, if that's comfortable. Or you could have the legs long, just whatever kind of allows the lower body to feel nice and quiet. And then from here, we're gonna pick up our blocks. If you have small hands, this gets a bit tricky just to get the blocks where you need them to be, but I'm placing the, my palm on the bottom of that block and then the other one. Sometimes you kind of have to grab them with your pinky and thumb to get them there. But then after that, they're just balancing on your palms. Okay, so I'm going to let the shoulder blades soften onto the mat. Yeah, I'm getting nice and sort of comfortable here and at the same time pressing those blocks to the ceiling. Yeah, it's tricky sometimes to simply balance them here, so this could be the practice. But I'll give you some variations. So the first one is the world's best push-ups. We're gonna bring the elbows out to the sides. Maybe the upper arms touch the floor and then we push back up. Notice how that feels. Can both arms work together here? You can adjust the angle of the push-up. You can bring those elbows a little closer to your sides. Maybe even right down by your waist. Or even overhead. We'll do three or four more, just kind of playing with what's possible. Yeah. I start to feel this in my wrists and forearms. Even though the blocks are relatively light, it's a lot to kind of keep the wrist angle stable. So I'm gonna press those blocks up again, and then I'm gonna shuffle along the ceiling with the blocks. Just seeing if I can find a little easy shuffle. It's okay if you drop the blocks now and then. I'm gonna turn that shuffle into more of a bicycle-like movement. And then maybe a backwards bicycle. Wonderful. Last piece, if you so choose, as we come to stillness, is to reach those arms overhead and just let them hover as close to the floor as you can get them to. And then we're gonna sweep the arms out to the sides. Again, seeing how close we can get the arms to hover without touching the floor. And we'll do this a few times. I like to imagine I'm making kind of snow angel wings, like you would in the snow. Reaching those fingertips away from me, seeing how close I can hover my arms and those blocks to the floor. You might even close your eyes and notice how this feels. And if you want to glide those arms on the floor, that's fine too. That can be quite delicious. Now once more, either direction. Great, and then maybe the arms rest at your sides. You can put your blocks down. It is time for final relaxation, um, but if there are any other poses or stretches you wish to do, you could do them now. You could press pause and just carry on moving as long as you wish. 
If you are ready for final relaxation, I'll offer a few suggestions. So the way we set up the legs with the knees bent, feet wide, turning the toes in, resting the knees against each other, that's a nice way to rest on the floor, especially if having the legs long aggravates the low back at all. Another fun thing, if there's some tightness in the low back, is to actually place those blocks under your knees um, instead. So if you've got blocks, sometimes it's fun to see how it feels to just have those knees bent and elevated over the blocks. Yeah. Ah, so once you've settled in, and perhaps closed your eyes, breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to arrive here in the present. Here at the end of your practice. We've been on this journey of breath and of movement. And now we offer ourselves to the support of the earth and the gift of gravity. Starting to tune in to that feeling of stillness and connection that gravity brings. From this place of stillness and connection, there is still the movement of the breath. Let's tune in to the rise and fall of our abdomen with the breath. Not controlling the breath, but simply allowing. Softening the belly to allow the inhale to deepen. And softening the belly to allow the exhale to lengthen. Now let's return to the gift of gravity. Notice where your feet touch down. And that feeling of stillness and connection where your feet touch the floor. Let's invite that feeling of stillness and connection into both feet. Allow the feet to become still. Allow your awareness to connect to your feet. Let's notice where the legs touch down, if they do, and invite that stillness into the legs, connecting your awareness to both of your legs. And notice where your buttocks and parts of your back touch down. And feel the stillness and connection. Invite that feeling into the whole torso. 
even as the belly rises and falls. Notice where your arms and hands touch down. Feeling stillness and connection. Inviting that into both arms and hands. Notice where the back of your head touches down. Inviting that feeling of stillness and connection into your whole head and neck. Into both arms and hands. into your whole torso, both legs and feet. Feeling your whole body supported by the floor. Inviting that stillness and connection into your whole self. As we rest here for a few moments more, feeling the belly rise and fall. If your mind begins to wander, that's okay. That's what minds do. Let's come back to the whole body, the whole breath for just about 30 seconds more. If you feel a deep need to remain still for a little while longer, please feel free to do so for as long as you're comfortable. If you're ready to invite movement, maybe it's the fingers and toes, the wrists or ankles. Maybe there's a slow turn of your head from side to side. You might yawn or stretch or move any way you need to. Eventually, maybe lifting those feet, drawing the knees to the belly. And maybe rolling over to the right side, resting your head on your arm. And pushing that left hand into the mat might help guide you upright. and perhaps back to that comfortable seat. 
You might once more press hand to the belly, hand to the chest, closing your eyes and offering yourself some sweetness. And that kind word, that prayer, that affirmation just for you. Slowly releasing those hands, perhaps opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.